MSNBC's latest trash politics and current affairs program, hosted by Never Trumper and serial failure Donny Dooch, has been scrapped after just 13 episodes. Are people sick and tired of the anti Trump rhetoric? And considering that this was primetime Saturday night television for MSNBC, what does this say for the future of the lamestream media? That's what we'll be discussing today on the podcast. Okay, free thinkers. Before we start, let's just quickly get the housekeeping out of the way. If you find this video informative, by all means, subscribe, hit the notification bell, like the video, and if you could leave a comment because all of that stuff really helps me out. And I would like to build a community here. Thank you. Let's go. The article itself, coming out of Fox News, states how Donny D loses his MSNBC show after just 13 episodes. This isn't the first time that he's actually lost his show. This has happened a number of times. He has lost shows in 2008, 2010, 2013 and 2015. So generally speaking, this guy is pretty damn boring, pretty damn annoying. And I would say the only reason he's getting so many chances, chance after chance after chance, is because he's connected to the swamp, connected to the Democrat Party. He's a staunch, staunch stalwart of the Democrat Party, and we know that MSNBC loves the Democrats. Mr. Donny D does try to put some positive spin on his complete and utter failure by um, announcing in his Thursday night tweet that his show was the highest rated Saturday night program for MSNBC ever. Well, if his program has been trashed after just 13 episodes and this is the highest rating program on MSNBC on a Saturday night which is generally considered to be a very good night for primetime television then what does that tell you about MSNBC and their ratings in general if this pile of trash was their highest rated Saturday night primetime program so why is this happening why are people turning off from mainstream media sources such as MSNBC and CNN? Why does this keep happening to the likes of Donny D and even Rachel, Rachel Maddow? She still has her program, but her ratings have had it taken a catastrophic hit over the last year or so. I wonder what could have happened in that time to make such a difference. Well, right off the bat, we have an absolutely absurd suggestion from Mr. Dooch who when appearing on a program called Morning Joe he asserted that Donald Trump could inadvertently start a civil war. He then follows that absurd suggestion with a classic example of left-wing hypocrisy and this is this is a classic This is a central tenant of left-wing ideology and doctrine, which is you should always think the exact opposite of what they say. He followed his absurd suggestion that Donald Trump was more than capable and willing of starting a civil war in his own country. I mean, Donald Trump is the only US president you've had in a long time that actually loves your country. And he certainly... He has certainly been the best thing for the United States. Speaking as an Englishman, and I love Donald Trump, we need our own Donald Trump. I follow American politics very closely, and we need our own Donald Trump. And speaking as a Donald Trump lover, I can assure you that Mr. Donny Dooch follows his absurd suggestion with the claim that he is not speaking hyperbole when he says... Donald Trump could and would start a civil war. But that is exactly what he is doing. This is classic left-wing hypocrisy at its finest. They always, they will always say the opposite of what they're doing. In simple terms, people turn off from political programs and current affairs programs if they've lost interest. And at the end of the day, when it comes to the mainstream media, people have lost interest. People just don't want to watch msnbc and and cnn anymore they've lost interest in it and there is a reason for that don't get me wrong there's a lot of people out there who are still sheep who still believe that donald trump is a russian agent a ridiculous claim it's worrying that the mainstream media are, are willing to 
go down such absurd ro- routes. This demonstrates in itself that mainstream media has become a, a, it's a house of cards. It's going to get blown down. It's a, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme built on information. And sooner or later, that it's all going to collapse. It's all going to come crashing down. So over the last couple of years, something must have happened to awaken people to realise just what the mainstream re- media really has become. And let's start with, of course, Donald Trump. Because we all know that the mainstream media are obsessed with Donald Trump. They, they are suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. They are. So what is Trump derangement syndrome? The Urban Dictionary has it down pretty accurately, I might, just, might add, as the following. It's a term for criticism of or negative reactions to the United States President Donald Trump that are alleged to be irrational and have little regard towards Trump's actual positions or actions taken. TDS does not allow people to see the facts clearly. For example, if President Trump cured cancer in children, it would be reported negatively to somehow make the president look bad. Everyone with TDS would then start protesting and spreading the false negative information while forgetting that children no longer have cancer. Hating Trump would be more important. And that sums things up perfectly. Take the likes of Donny D, his program and Rachel Maddow and everything to do with the mainstream media. These people are suffering from Trump derangement syndrome to such an extent they are happy to see the entire CNN network, the entire MSNBC network, the entire mainstream media broadcasting group together burn just so they can just so they can point the finger at Trump. This is the level of TDS these people have. They will allow the entirety of the Western Hemisphere's mainstream media and all of its history going back decades to burn for their hatred of Trump. Okay, now take this box down here. This activity box is how often... Trump derangement syndrome or the phrase or the word was used in common parlance and as you can see something very revealing has happened from the year 2017 not too long after Trump came to power as we go along to the present day in 2019 there have been general spikes it's gone up and up and up but there have been general spikes these are fits of self these are fits of left wing self flagellation i'm sure throughout history for those of you who study history you know that every now and again there is a like a sort of religious there's an outbreak of religious self flagellation where you might have hundreds of people simultaneously describing themselves as jesus christ they say i am jesus christ or or whatnot and you'll end up there'll be like 50 people getting stoned to death on the same day for saying they are the the son of god or they they slept with jesus or, or whatever you know what i mean just craziness okay just stupidity if the likes of Donnie Dooch and Rachel Maddow are to get things back on track and the mainstream media in general, they have to stop treating the public as idiots. Stop treating them as fools. The, one of the main problems they have with Donald Trump is his ability to connect directly with the electorate and with the public in general via Twitter and social media and other forms. And not only that, he can talk to particularly working class people on a level that the democrat hopefuls for the 2020 election certainly can't and he can do it in a very sincere and legit manner he doesn't have to like for example hillary clinton and ocasio cortez who have both been caught on film using actually using accents that they don't have they're doing this in order to fool the electorate and the public that they're speaking to in rallies and meetings that they go to, hoping that they can fool the public into thinking, oh, we're the same, I'm one of you. It's all a ruse, it's all a game, it's all a charade. Donald Trump does not need to do this. Donald Trump is is someone who can connect with the electorate on a, on a legit 
down to earth level and gets what their needs are, what their desires are, what their hopes are. Voting for Donald Trump is not a vote for hate, like the left say. The left often do this type of thing. They'll say, oh, this is this is a... You vote for Trump, you're voting for hate. It's the same with anything else with the left. They mean the opposite of everything they say. Everything they accuse you of, they are themselves. Everything they want to be, they are actually envious of you for, because you are. For example, when you vote for Donald Trump, you're voting for hope. You hope for a better United States of America. You hope for a better community that you're in. You hope for a safer community. You're hoping for more prosperous jobs, better jobs, high quality jobs. You're hoping for a law enforcement that is well funded and well respected. If the Democrats had their way, which they do in many major urban areas and inner city areas, you'll find that the the law law enforcement have been humiliated, they've been degraded, they've been disrespected. They haven't had the respect that they deserve and that they need. And at the end of the day, it is ironic that the mainstream media and everyone on the left suffering from severe cases of Trump derangement syndrome have the gall to point at Donald Trump and anyone on the right, but especially Donald Trump, and call him a traitor or or somehow colluding with foreign powers. Because at the end of the day, the only people who have ever colluded against their own country and their own people have been the left. (laughs) 